Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today the Dump Dog and I are gonna show you just a little dilemma we got on our hands. And that dilemma is a big one. We got way too much stuff. We don't have enough time. We don't have enough resources. We don't have enough room. We don't have enough summertime. We don't have enough patience. We just don't have enough. So what I'm talking about is we got, we got too many projects. We got too many vehicles. So, I spent all Labor Day weekend dragging stuff out, getting it out for the year. I got several cars that weren't out yet this year. I got a couple that weren't out last year. I got a few that haven't been out in multiple years. And uh, that's the worst thing you can do with an old car is leave it sit. Unless, of course, somebody comes along and gets that car going and makes a video of it. So, in that case, go ahead. Put your 69 Chevelle Super Sport 396 four speed away in a barn and uh, forget about it for 20 years and then let me know and I'll come pick it up. But anyway, I'm, uh, I'm in over my head, so I'm gonna show you what my dilemma is. I'm gonna tell you which cars are for sale, which cars maybe aren't for sale, which cars need some work, what work they need. And you're gonna tell me uh, which ones I should sell, which ones I should work on, which ones I should do what with. And we're gonna go from there because winter is just around the corner and I don't have room to store all these things. Some of them probably don't need to be inside. Some of them probably do need to be inside. Some of them probably need new homes. Some of them need a lot of work. Some of them just need to be driven. And uh, it doesn't seem like I can find time to do that. I can keep a couple of them on the road. Reggie, I've probably put 2,000, 2,500 miles on this year. Uh, Bernie, I drive the ever living crap out of that thing. But other than that, yeah, I don't know that we've been putting, doing a very good job. Maybe a tank of gas here and there, but there's a lot of them that ain't had but a couple of ounces of fuel through them, maybe a gallon or two. So let's go take a look. Never mind this silly thing, or that thing, or that thing, or that thing, or that thing. We're just talking about cars that run. These are all the ones that run and drive, and these are not my late models. The 92. Black C10 is the closest thing that we got to a late model out here. You gonna finish your breakfast while I uh, go show these people the cars? See, I don't have any help today because uh, Mojo is taking the day off because it's Labor Day. Some type of holiday or something, I guess. And you guys are all watching my latest video and we're uh, laboring away on Labor Day because why wouldn't you? Look at this lineup. I think I counted there's uh, 14 of them out here. And there's another one there. And that 56 runs and drives. Technically, the bubble top runs and drives. I got a 66 Chevy pickup over there that runs and drives. Reggie and the Galaxy are inside because they're nice. And uh, it rained this morning. And they always sleep inside. So look at this thing. 1978 Ford. Crew cab, F350, ramp truck, 460, automatic. Mostly aluminum wheels, white letters out. We just put radiator hoses on this thing. I would suggest putting tires and brakes on it just because I'm leery about that stuff. But actually you could probably jump in this thing and go. This thing runs phenomenal, goes down the road great. This thing's for sale. If you wanna own this thing, price and availability down in the description. I forgot about the ramp truck project out back and then the OG ramp truck that we got. Those two are out back and they run and drive. Plus there's all kinds of stuff that runs and drives like the 64 Buick, La Sabre, somebody needs to own that. 70 or 69 Ford F250, a 51 Ford F4, a 60 Cadillac four-door hardtop. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that runs and drives out back that we just did our video on, pushed it out back. Motorhomes, vans, all that good stuff. But anyway, uh, these ramp trucks, they're really cool and they seem like a novel idea, but it's so nice to get into a late model because a lot of my stuff is a long ways away. If I was getting stuff like within 20, 30, 40 miles, this thing would be great. Terrible on gas, no cruise, no AC. Just the amenities that late models have. Cause I'm driving to the cities, which is like four hours away. So yeah. Anyway, uh, I really want to just buff the paint on this thing. Uh, we cleaned out the inside pretty good. And then hopefully somebody will buy this thing. I think it's a pretty reasonable price. Try to find a crew cab, dense side Ford in any condition. They're big money. Plus, you start talking big block, automatic, aluminum wheels, power steering. It's got AC. It's got just a ton of options. Yeah, it needs some rust repair and stuff like that, but I would drive it and just enjoy it the way it is. The winch probably needs to be a little bit bigger. 
we got all the lights working you got to get the tint out of the windows because that's uh terrible but this thing's pretty good isn't it duff so yeah price and availability down below this thing it needs to go before i get attached because i feel like once i buff the paint i'm gonna order tires and uh brakes and put that stuff in it and then i'm gonna either fall in love with it or it's gonna rot away out back so who knows maybe you'll get it all fixed up but this thing's really good next on the list dirt rentals okay here's the here's my deal with dirt rentals this thing is it's so good and so bad at the same time this thing drives phenomenal but it might break in half at any point so i can't sell this to somebody in good faith because i would sure hate for somebody to get in a wreck and get hurt or die or worse so and plus if it's on a decal Get your uh, Dirt Reynolds decals at Mortski.com. Get your banners there. Get your magnetic screwdrivers, your can koozies, your shirts. I know I got a Chris Craft on today. It's laundry day. It's labor day. We got to do laundry. But since this thing's on a decal, I can't get rid of it. This thing's going to be a donor for something. We're going to find either something in this fleet that's already kind of running that's not good enough, or we're going to pull something out of the weeds and we're going to steal everything out of this car. This car is not good enough to fix up. I put like 120 miles on this thing the other day. I jumped in it and I was gonna drive to my storage facility and I was gonna drop this off for one of these other cars. And I was there and I was like, I got 12 miles on the road. I'm like, this thing runs way too good. So I just kept going and I drove all the way to Lidgerwood and I got ice cream and then I went north up to uh, up Highway 18 down Highway 27 and I went to Lisbon. And I picked up some sandwiches because we're out of Wibbies and we can't get Wibbies around here. So I picked up some summer shandies because they're probably going to be hard to get shortly. And uh, then I went out to, uh, what's the name of that? Dead Colt Creek. Cruise around. Saw some friends out there. Hey, Louie's honking at me. What a nice guy. But anyway, this thing drives really good. I hit something, a bump. I could feel it on my foot trying to come through the floorboard and it's the, the exhaust pipe on the left hand side. It's kind of dangling. So I got to tie that up. But otherwise, this thing drives, it's really good. It's pretty low. So I, I probably should put new coil springs in it when I put the subframe underneath something else. Cause this thing is gonna be great. It's got power steering, power disc brakes. It's got all new brake lines, all new brake components. It's got new tires. It's got a posi. It's got a LS, it's got overdrive, all the wiring's done. It's got the fuel pump, it's got the radiator. It's got all the stuff to LS swap something. It's got a battery even. It's kind of got a fuel cell, maybe, thinger. So, we can't let this one go because it's Dirt Reynolds. Because I'm into it quite reasonable, it's going to be an absolutely amazing donor car and mostly because it's, uh, it's, it's unsafe. I mean, if I get seriously maimed in it, it ain't the end of the world. If Duff does, that would be the end of the world. But yeah, we can't let anybody go down in flames. Also, we determined why people who drive these F bodies with T-tops have mullets. I got spinning tires! You got them spinning tires, do you? Just to keep the sun off the back of your neck because this is like driving a convertible. It, is, it was scalding hot on my neck that day. So mullets, that's why they call them Camaro cuts. It's cause you know, with your T-taps, it keeps your neck cool. Yeah, this thing is, is so terrible and so good at the same time. I love it, but I also hate it. We're not gonna fix it up. So no, don't even think about that. The, thing, the sucky part about this car is you can't put a hood on it. So you kind of got to keep it inside. Interior is already roached out. But I don't want to get in it and drive it with a wet seat. So I could put like neoprene seats in it, but for the most part, it's gotta it's gotta stay inside. We could put the T-tops back on it, but what fun would that be? This power window needs some work. So yeah, I don't know. I think this is gonna get knocked in the head. The cowboy Cadillac, we cannot get rid of it because you guessed it, it's on a decal. Six liter 4L ADE, dually lowered, new tires, new brakes, airbags in the back. This thing works great, and then it works terribly, and then it works great, and it works terribly. It's a love-hate relationship. It's working great right now. Knock on wood. We can't get rid of this thing. Oh, it's got digital gauges, and it's got AC. We need to get the cruise in it and do a couple things. We're gonna keep working on this thing. But this is what happens to me with projects. I get to like this point right here, and then I get bored. 
and then I just my ADD kicks in and I work on another project or I just drive it and I leave the wires hanging underneath the dash like this one and this one and I just I just keep rolling with it but Cowboy Cadillac is sticking around uh, again I'm into it go well, you're gonna hear this a lot I'm into these things reasonable I bought almost I think I've lost money on two vehicles probably three in my entire life the rest I never sold right that's how it works. You can't lose money on something if you don't sell it. It's like buying stocks. You never lose money on a stock you don't sell. But like I said, uh, most of the stuff I bought reasonable when I could afford it and when I saw it was a deal and I always knew that if I bought it at a good price, you can dump it. That's the beauty of this stuff. That's how I got into this stuff. I know a lot of people don't like the term jockey or flipper or whatever, but that's what you got to do. You got to buy it. If you got a skill, my skill set was flipping or not flipping stuff but like buying stuff cleaning it up wheels tires stance cleaning out the interior getting it running getting a title for it whatever whatever work it needed to make it worth a little bit more money and some stuff is just a good deal so you just jump in the pickup with the trailer and you load it up and you bring it back and you you turn it that's that's the american dream that's the american way that's how i got to where i'm at is i not only made a little bit of money but I also picked up a lot of skills along the way. I made a lot of networks along the way, both on the buying side, the people that I met, and the selling side, the people that I met, and the swap meets and the car shows and the places I went. So yeah, that's, that's what it's all about in this uh, hobby is, you know, learning new things, meeting new people, and putting some jingle in your pocket. You're not gonna get rich doing this, but you're gonna be able to keep going. There's, there was times where I only had two or three cars. There was a time, I think I think we bought my first car. It was two Cadillacs, an 85 and an 87. So I've never only had one car. We bought two right off the bat, me and the old man. Actually, it was my money, but Dad said I should buy it. Well, there's Bobber out bobbing around on Labor Day. The beauty of having friendly neighbors in North Dakota and uh, living by the highway. So, LS1, the Cowboy Cadillac. We're just going to keep plugging away at it. Uh, we got to put the other fuel tank in it, and we got to get the fuel tank switch in there hooked up. Got to put the matching rear seat in it. Uh, I need to clean up some wiring. Uh, the rim on that side, I think, is bent, so we need to find a rim or multiple rims. And we got to clean up some wiring. Got to pull the dash pad out and move the speakers. There's a whole list of things. So that's what I do is I got an iPhone, I don't know, Android, iPhone, whatever you are. Get, uh, you, there's like lists or notes in there, notes. And I have notes for every vehicle that I own. So... 1985 Chevrolet C30, there's a list of things that needs to be done. There is the bent wheel, the rear seat, the cruise control, the fuel system, yada, yada, yada. So that's how I keep track of what stuff needs to be done. Because some of these cars haven't been driven in two years, but there's still notes in my iPhone. Next on the list, the gold 1963 Impala Sport Coupe. I was getting to the end of this thing. I got the wire harness in. Got her brakes done, power steering upgrades, new radiator, resealed all the engine, yada, yada, yada. And I was I was just hung up on it. I, I couldn't, I got new exhaust on it, new fuel system, all that stuff. And I got burned out. Uh, it was just taking too long and I really didn't want a 63 Impala Super Sport that bad, but this is a super solid car, so on and so forth. But guess what? Somebody bought this one. We got to check for this car. Uh, this car is going to Iowa along with the 1954 Mercury. That car took forever to sell. That car I never was in love with, but it was a cool car. The price was right, and uh, the video did great on that car. The video is doing pretty good on this car. But So those two are going to Iowa to the same gentleman. So appreciate that guy for watching and for uh, buying these things. Hopefully he finishes it up the rest of the way. That's what I'm really good at is taking the car this far. Did I make money on it? Absolutely I made money on this car. Did I get rich on it? No, uh, the YouTube revenue helps a little bit. And then plus my time, I didn't make a ton of money for my time, but I still made money doing it. Uh, you gotta make money doing this stuff. You gotta pay the electricity in the shop. You gotta pay for the tools. You gotta pay the taxes. You gotta pay for the car, the trailer, the skid steers, the diesel fuel, the insurance, the registration, all that good stuff on all the vehicles. So if you're mad because I make money on these cars, this isn't the channel for you because this is reality and if I was losing money at this uh, I wouldn't be doing it anymore because you can only lose money for so long unless you're into roundy round car racing those guys lose money all the time and somehow keep going so 283 power glide 63 super sport 
I'm probably going to regret selling this one because it is a two-door hardtop and it is a cool color combination and it is just super, super, super dry. Factory AC car as well, factory power steering. That's going. <sighs> this thing, I don't know why I'm keeping it. Again, I got into it dirt cheap and the video did really well. So this thing owes me absolutely nothing. This is an 85 Chevrolet short bed two-wheel drive. It's got DJM suspension all the way around, flip kit, eight inch rallies with brand new Cooper Cobras. I drove this thing for like a half a summer, everything worked great. Uh, we tuned up the 4.3 a little bit. It's got rust in a lot of weird spots. There's really nothing great about this truck. It's a 4.3 carbureted turbo 400, turbo 375, whatever you want to call it. It's three speed, it's not an overdrive. Uh, it's got the little tiny 10 bolt one wheel peel rear end this thing drives great the 4.3 is absolutely shot i got it running i had it out earlier this spring and then i got it out a couple days ago and i put like two gallons of coolant in it and there wasn't a puddle on the ground and the dipstick was about this much over full and it's chooches white smoke something fierce going around so this thing either needs a new home it's not on a decal yet but it probably should be because i think that video is I think it's I think it's got a million views. If it doesn't have a million views, it's close. So this thing's good. It's got it. We put a seat in it. It's got a good seat in it. It's quiet. It drives smooth. It's got an alignment. It's got new tires. It's got quiet exhaust. I should probably let this thing go. So price and availability on this thing, we'll put it down there. It's probably gonna be a I don't really want to sell it price because it's in bad enough shape where it can sit outside, so it doesn't have to be inside. But the tires are gonna rot off, but I kind of want to steal the tires off. And wheels and put on this thing but that's coming up next anyway this thing either needs a, a v8 swap like a 350 or a 305 or a 400 or 3 3 stroke or whatever but if i'm gonna go that far i'm tempted to just do something like dirt reynolds and take the whole 534 l60e and put in there because then you get the overdrive you get fuel injection yada yada but then you're swap then you're then you're redoing exhaust and then you're going to want a limited slip and then it's 308 so you're going to want like 373s and then it's like wow then you're going to want cruise control and air conditioning well then we might as well put tilt in it and then we fix the radio and it just snowballs it works so good when the 4.3 was good and now it's not anymore so i should probably to be honest i should probably just find a v8 two-wheel drive pickup steal all the parts i need and swap it in there uh, it'd be really cool. That's what we, we got rid of that pickup at the topper this winter. I think it was like an 83 Chevy two-wheel drive with a topper. That had a 305, 700R4, the bigger rear end, all that good stuff. Could have just went, whoosh, dropped it all right in there. Maybe put a 350 instead of the 305. Had the wire harness. We'd had the mounts. We'd had the hoses. We'd had the big radiator because this thing's got the little baby radiators. We'd had all the stuff for tilt. We'd had all the stuff for cruise. We'd had all the stuff for AC. Would all been there, but... Then it had two pickups in the yard, so we sold it. But anyway, this thing really is a pretty freaking good pickup. I hate these big dumb mirrors. The rocker is like completely gone at the front for some reason. It's got a little bit of rot in the cab corner. It's got some rust there. They all rust back there. The tailgate is super rotten in the bottom, but that's easy enough to change. It's got that ugly bumper on it. The bed floor is phenomenal. And then it's, it's just got rot, rot and just really weird spots so my thoughts are uh keep it throw a 350 in it scab some rockers in it real quick bedsides god it's it's what i really want is a 73 4 two-wheel drive maybe even a five early two-wheel drive texas rust-free original paint i know i'm setting the bar high so if somebody's got one of those that they want to trade that's just a roller i'll give them this one as is there's like Wheels, tires, and suspension, there's like 3,000 bucks right there alone. So, yeah, I don't know. Casper, I think, is what we call this thing. It's a good pickup. The interior is, like, super nice. Well, I mean, if you threw a carpet in this thing, it'd be good, right, Duff? Okay, Duff says we're keeping it. Oh, you're all swampy, wet from the rain this morning. Now you're jumping on my nice seat, you goon. Come on, let's get out of there. Oh, yeah, go to Morsky.com. Get yourself a low-life koozie. Or a Mountain Dew one. Dumbest thing about this pickup is the wing windows hit these big dumb mirrors. How dumb is that? You just want to go for an R-I-D-E. You want me to get done with this walk around, don't you? Next on the chopping list, I think it's a 74 Blazer. We call the uh, the Bluezer here. This thing was a $100 
X four wheel drive rig that was sitting on top of a scrap pile in a junkyard. There was no axles underneath it. I can't remember if there was a, there was a motor in it. We got the motor running actually. So what we got here is a 74 Chevy Blazer that we pulled from a junkyard and it's, uh, it's missing some stuff. Valve covers in particular. Oh man, look at that plumbing job there. But anyway, the axles were missing, so I found a buddy who had a, he stole a small block automatic out of his like 77 or 78 Chevy two-wheel drive. So I took the front suspension and the rear end and suspension out of his two-wheel drive, put in there, stole some harnesses, stole a couple other trinkets. I had this like 83 Chevy three-quarter ton van I picked up on an auction for pretty reasonable. It had a very well-maintained uh, 350 four barrel and a turbo 350. <laughs> all that stuff put it in there we put a new aluminum radiator in there and then we put we lowered it you know cut two coils and flipped it in the rear and then we got these uh, US mags 15 by 8s and 15 by 10s the 10s are too wide so I either need eights all the way around or put the eights on the back and buy some sevens for the front or we just do the uh, take the 15 by 8 uh, rallies off of Casper and we put on the old bluzer uh, this thing needs shocks because there is none on the front apparently I forgot that I did that like I said the rear quarters rub uh, we could cut trim them out but you know they're all rusty I don't want to do that uh, it needs floor pans because they're gone uh, it needs carpet ripped out of it. it needs the top just ripped off of it uh, it needs the quadra bog gone through because it runs like complete hot garbage but I think chin went through one I think we got one sitting around going to go onto it it's got no gauges but it's it's so good the hood is kinked like I said, I paid a hundred bucks for this thing. Yeah, I got a bunch more into it since then. But I mean, short of the wheels and tires, I don't have a ton into it. Um, that fender's rotten, the hood's kinked, the door's rotten, the quarters are shot. It's missing a ton of glass. Uh, somebody did send us a wing window. I mean, out of the parts pickups, we probably got some stuff. Uh, we put a tilt column in it. It's got power disc brakes. Like I said, I can't sell this thing because I'm <laughs> I'm attached to everything and I'm into it for nothing and it's probably not worth a whole ton. You know what? Let's put a price and availability in this thing. It might be a not for sale price, but uh, I think I got some patch panels to just scab into it just to make it decent enough. So my thoughts were just leave it ratty. You can't, this thing would take way too much to make it nice. Rip the carpet out, just sheet metal screw some floor pans in it. Uh, Either find some different seats or take these ones, maybe put foam in them or just put like a neoprene cover on it so it can sit outside because this thing does not need to sit inside. It's, it is shot as you can see that. It needs quarters, it needs inner quarters, it needs everything. But like with this baby blue and the other blue, it's got just the perfect patina. Tailgate's rotten. It's got that cruel chrome bumper. I was thinking just rip the top off this thing, scab the floor so you don't fall through, get rid of that carpet so it doesn't hold moisture and drive it uh like i said it needs a, a quarter bog put on it it needs gauges put in it but it's a small block so really all you need is uh, a fuel gauge and a speedometer because and if it, as long as it doesn't leak it's gonna have oil pressure and uh they don't overheat it's got a new radiator it's good these wheels and tires do make it look great but they they freaking rub and i'm not about to raise it up i'm not about to put air shocks on it so it just needs 15 by 8s instead of the 10s on the back and then maybe put 7s on the front or leave it 8s who knows or just steal those and put on it i do like the slots on it so yeah i should probably just buy some 8s anywho good rig we could sell it what the heck it's a full removable top i think that was like 73 to 75 only maybe it was 73 and 4. Uh, all the other ones the top comes back to like right here so these doors are similar to a pickup door but they're kind of a cutoff pickup door. The Bronco. Talk about a love-hate relationship. I look for one of these things forever. They're all hot garbage. This one's the best hot garbage I could find. It was the only thing I could find that was affordable. And I paid real money for this thing probably like three, four years ago. And uh, you can't even 
touch one for what I paid for this thing. Now these things are absolutely insane. Those things are insane. Square body's insane. Let's be honest, everything in this fleet has gotten insane. Okay, except for maybe Trans Ams. You can probably pick those things up, they're cheap. Uh, this thing's got a 200 Ford six in it. It's the wrong six, it's gutless. Uh, it's got a belt chirp that annoys me. It's got a surging issue. I don't know if it's uh, fuel or ignition related. It's all new, so I don't know. We need to dial that in. It's got 15s with uh, 31s on it, dog dishes, the only way to go. But uh, anyway, that's the same deal with this thing. Strip the floors, uh, put some seats, or the seats, like, this, this thing's just gonna sit outside all summer. And we might sneak it in the shop once in a while because I like it more than this thing, but. It's gutless, it drives absolutely horrendously. I mean, it's, it's like a golf cart. Like, the steering sucks, the brakes are good. Uh, the fuel gauge doesn't work the speedometer does work it just it's pretty solid it's got some whammies i should put rock what i really want to do with this thing okay here's what i want to do with this. there goes bob again because he hasn't driven by in four minutes uh i have bumpers for it i have uh several full tops if it once it gets the fall time but i think i'll just park it then because it's fun to drive without stop i got uh regular bumpers like i said i want to I think it's Caribbean turquoise. I just want to scuff and shoot this thing Caribbean turquoise. You know, maybe fix a couple of these cracks here, uh, fix the rust here. But then where do you quit? Um, you can buy body parts pretty reasonable for this thing. Put some quarters on it, or put some rockers on it. Maybe knock that dent on the quarter, or buy a quarter. I don't know. Uh, these seats are pretty presentable, but probably need some covers. Put some covers on them. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe put. The floor patch panel maybe not i think i just want to knock the dents out maybe find a better tailgate put bumpers on it scuff at this uh and shoot at this caribbean turquoise do it all myself because this this color is terrible and it's really not that bad these things get so beat and so rusty and they're all cut in the back which i do like the look of them being cut but if it's uncut you got to leave it because you never find another one like that it's a 66, one year only of this silver colored interior. And then plus it was a half factory, half cab pickup. So it's actually a pretty rare unit, but it's like I said, with that 200, it's kind of bastardized. It, it needs a V8 or fuel injection or something because that thing sucks. And I should put power steering on it because that steering box is terrible. I don't know what it is. It sucks, but not for sale. I mean, if somebody came and said like, I'll give you like $35,000 for it. I would probably sell it though. I mean, same with a lot of this stuff. If you threw stupid, crazy money at me, hit us up, mortgagecompare at gmail.com if you uh, want to buy one of these with stupid, crazy money or just for the money we're asking. All right, next on the list is what we affectionately call the white light. And this is a 1962 Chevrolet regular cab, short bed, big back window two-wheel drive fleet side it's got a six-cylinder 235 in it last year the 235 it's got torsion bar suspension it's got the knee knocker dash wrap around windshield and it's got a three-speed overdrive so i've had this thing for man 10 years probably close to 10 years eight picked this thing up as an amateur restoration again it was a super crazy good deal so i bought it uh, timing gear went on the 235, so I put a timing gear in it. And while I had it out, I put in a three speed overdrive in it, doesn't have enough power to pull it. Uh, other than that, we just cranked the torsion bar down. The hood was the paint was all flaking off, so we repainted it and then we put a fender on it. And I don't know what happened here, but somebody clipped my fender or I clipped somebody, I don't remember that. Like I said, this thing is an amateur restoration. Uh, the hood another chip happened there i don't know it needs to be washed probably the last time i drove it was back to the 50s in 2019 brakes are great on this thing just manual single reservoir drum brakes it's got the ugly chrome spoke wagon wheels under it i think those are 70 pontiac catalina hubcaps that i just tucked on there and they actually look pretty good in my opinion it's things always sat outside sat inside the last couple years when i parked it but uh the paint's really chalky needs a good wash job it's the gaps are terrible on it they put a lot of mud in it the frame was rusty and it's been tweaked just needs a lot of things but it's a pretty good pickup it needs a bed floor it's it's never going to be a show pickup because you got to do everything but it's good enough it's got a receiver hitch it's got chrome bumpers 
I don't know what to do with this pickup. It's on a decal, so we can't get rid of it though. Uh, what I'm thinking on this thing is find another like 64 to 66 two wheel drive long box frame or short box if I could find one. And then put 71, 72 Chevy pickup brakes. So you get five lug and you get disc brakes and you get power steering and all that stuff on that frame and shorten it up it's long otherwise find a short bed and then put like an ls and an overdrive and put take everything off of this and drop it on there so that it's an amazingly driving well driving pickup. this pickup drives pretty good it rides a little rough because it's on the bump stops because that's why i like them but it's super gutless with the uh 235 but it gets you from a to b and it gets terrible gas mileage absolutely horrendous this thing's like eight or nine miles a gallon with that overdrive if it'll even pull it in overdrive but she needs some work it's 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 not a bad pickup though the paint's coming off around the fuel tank here it's got a 88 to 94 seat in it 59 impala steering wheel this red is absolutely horrendous but that's the way it was pretty cool because it's a big back window um yeah all the gauges work in it custom cab oh white lightning yeah this thing hadn't been out in two years we got her out this thing is just it's like wash it and go get in check the uh fluids and and runner not a bad pickup the 92 it's got a million views uh i don't know what we call this thing the black pickup the 92 the obs doesn't really have a name but it's on a sticker a decal and it's got a million views so we can't sell it uh picked this up for 800 bucks in oklahoma when i was down at puddins need something to haul home found this thing brought it back dinged it up a little bit lowered it put some wheels and tires on it and now it's been just nickel and diamond us since we put bumpers on it uh we detailed the interior we redid the headliner uh, we got the cruise working we got the ac working this thing drives great overdrive cruise ac fuel injection v8 this thing is just a great driving pickup it's super dry so this thing has to stay inside it's not for sale unless somebody throws you know, thirty-five thousand dollars at us. I think that's the asking price. It works way too good. We put headlights in it. Uh, we redid the brakes. Put a seat cover on it. I'll put a Bluetooth radio CD player thing in it. Yeah, this thing is just super good for getting in and going. I love this pickup. It's a great pickup. Uh, I don't have time to drive it. I haven't driven it much in the last couple months. But yeah. Good unit when there's not snow on the ground because we don't want to get in rusty. What are you hunting over there? Anything good? All right, uh, another pickup with no name. 71 Ford F100 Ranger XLT. It's on a decal. So it's going to be $35,000, which is more than this pickup's worth to buy it. Can't sell it. It's a 71 Ford Ranger XLT. It was a two wheel drive, 390 automatic. Uh, the scrap guy called and said, hey, this pickup's going for more than scrap if you want it. Uh, for parts pickup for a 68 short bit that I had at the time You better go get it. So I went and got it and brought it home and I'm like this thing's way too nice for parts So I sold it that guy had it for about five years and I called and said hey, you still got that pickup? Yeah, you want to buy back for what you sold me for? He said absolutely and in the meanwhile I'd bought like a 78 or 9 Ford four-wheel drive long box chassis with a 400 a C6 and an NP205 So I shortened that up like an inch so there's no kit uh, gap between the box and the cab and everything just pretty much bolts right on there for the most part i had to do a little bit of wiring i had to make a steering shaft what's in that hole are you digging up my yard you goon we got work to do chasing gophers what is it jimmy fell in the well did timmy fall in the well last he did he what is it how many holes are in her yard all of them and duff is eyeball deep in them uh, anyway, this thing's got 33 by 1050s, 33 by 1250s. They will just barely touch in the front if you uh, hit the right bump. So we either need some spacers or some new springs or to go to like a 32. We used to have those 31s that are on the Bronco on it, and these look way more gooder. This pickup's pretty nice for original paint. Uh, it's been repainted right in there. I need to buff this thing here one of these days too. The tailgate's got some rust in it in weird spots right there but uh the bed floor is like crazy good because it had plywood underneath it and it didn't all rust out i need to make a custom fuel tank because the uh, stock saddle tank most of these pickups came with a fuel filler right here this thing was custom ordered that doesn't have the tank behind the seat so it had this saddle tank the original saddle tank 
It's the transfer case, so we can't run that. So I need to make a custom tank right now. There's a fuel cell in there. It's only like 10 or 12 gallons. This 400 with a two barrel gets terrible gas mileage. So you're constantly putting fuel in. It does have fuel gauge in it. Speedometer doesn't work. Uh, we got a retro sound stereo in it. This thing's a really good pickup. It's got a little rot down there. Super like for me nice interior you know the seats torn but it's it's very respectable this pickup is is actually way too good uh the ring and pinion is worn out so it's like bangs when you go in and out of gear plus the slip yoke not slip yoke the splines on the front rear drive shafts are shot so this winter or sometime i need to take the drive shafts off take them to a drive shaft shop get rebuilt pull the rear end out see if it could be salvaged and if we can just put a ring and pinion in it or if we just uh, call up somebody like quick performance and get uh whatever gear ratio it is with a posi in it and drop that in carry on with their lives it is a really it's a good pickup it's like hit the key and go oh yeah the rear main seal just decided to crap out on us speaking of rear main seals crapping out on us bernie's is crapping out on us so i got to do a rear main seal in a 400 and a 390 so i've never done like a good video on bernie bernie's on a decal now so yeah get your decals for bernie and for the orange ford and all these other ones at mortski.com uh, bernie is a 1970 it's a three or a four i can't remember i think it's a 74 uh this thing was bought brand new by bernie's auto body and glass they had it converted to this holmes 480 wrecker i got all the paperwork on this thing they restored it in like 97 99 something like that and then they put like 200 miles on it in 20 some years and i caught wind that it was for sale and they caught i called them it was a crazy low number and they said well, we had to sell it to somebody who's going to use it and i said i am your guy you guys know how much we use this thing this thing is awesome and it's probably one of the nicest vehicles so far in the fleet it's super solid well done up but it's got enough small issues that need to be addressed it's a 390 four barrel four speed uh holmes 480 twin boom wrecker uh we put all new belts hoses did all that stuff went through the carburetor uh, fixed a couple of leaks here and there like i said needs a rear main seal now uh, we did points tune up all that stuff did tires on it did brakes this thing this thing is really good it's got like this white pearl paint on it they're a body shop so they did an amazing job of it i think like the cab corner on the other side is just uh starting to bubble out and then the box is too we put some pretty aggressive tires on it put all six of those tires these four tires on it we got all the lights working this thing is so freaking handy it would cost you an arm and a leg to get this thing out of here and it's like presentable enough to take to a car show here's some of the rust that's in the bed you know ain't the end of the world be easy enough fix should do something about it and then oh is this fender the dog leg on that fender is starting to bubble out but other than that probably the nicest interior of anything in the fleet as well i mean dash pads nice seats nice we put carpet in it yeah this thing is way too good radio doesn't work but door shut great this thing's a good good freaking rig like i said we use it oh it's the fenders rust in there a little bit too but yeah we're super appreciative for the folks at bernie's who uh reached out to us and gave us the opportunity to buy this thing uh this is all painted over or clear coated over so we can't take that off the side which is fine so free advertising for bernie's give them a shout 886-8321 you know watertown south dakota all right this one you're gonna hear this too there's there's some sentimental stuff going on here this is a 1961 ford unibody which they only made i think from 61 to 63. these are a slick side ford uh, and it is a short bed super hard to find you could get uh unibodies in half ton three quarter ton this is a 223 six owner three on the tree this pickup is worn out needs king pins needs ball joints uh pinion the ring of pinion is shot uh, the shift linkage is all shot it's it's just worn out but it's like surprisingly dry i got it from a real good buddy of mine he gave me a pretty good i don't even i think i traded him something I don't think I bought this. I can't remember. But anyway, yeah, it's it's kind of this cool green. It's not on a decal yet. What I vision for this thing is like putting a subframe, either a Dodge Dakota or we could take everything out of dirt rentals just to piss off the Ford guys. Uh, 
because like I said, the front end's wore out, the rear end's worn out, it sits way too high. Drop this thing on the ground, put a V8 automatic, and uh, just enjoy it. It's It's been rolled over or something at one point, so there's like a lot of filler up here, but it's dry and it's pretty straight otherwise. I had these wheels and tires that I bought a project from a buddy. These are off of like a Model A. They're something astronomically huge. 285, 70, 15, just huge tires, but they were the right bolt pattern. I just stuck a different tailgate on it, came with the pickup. These are uh, Ford. They did like such a great side of designing the job of designing the whole pickup. And then they got to the tailgate like, ah, screw it. Just huck something on there. So yeah, pretty cool pickup. I don't drive it much because it's got like, it, it had a bad clutch when I bought it. And the reason it's got a bad clutch is because first gear is stupid tall. Um, 223 runs pretty good. We had to pull it out, put a frost plug in it. And like I said, I've put a clutch in another time. Rear end's shot, kingpins are shot. Uh, this thing just, yeah, it needs a V8 swap and everything. So let me know, should we take everything out of the snitch rocket? Just cut that off, put under here. Should we put a Mustang too? Should we put the 302 out of the snitch rocket or should we? LS it and uh, do another Dodge Dakota or take everything out of Dirt Reynolds and put it in here. I don't know. Ford unibody things. But like I said, this pickup runs and drives good enough to go to town and putt around a little bit, but it's you're not going to drive it very far because I don't know. It just it's gutless. And uh, yeah, but it's solid. The seat's pretty respectable for us. She's an okay rig. Like I said, I, I can't really get rid of that one because I got it from a buddy. It's going to be hard to replace, and I got to do it reasonable enough. If anything, I would have to sell it back to him. Speaking of that, next on the list, Rex. Rex is a 1966 Chevrolet C10 long bed two-wheel drive. It was a factory 283 four-speed. This thing has been in Sargent County its entire life. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Rex Bell bought it brand new. And then I went to Frankie Heitman, both those guys are deceased. One of my buddies bought it at an auction sale. I think his bidding number is still on the hood here. Oh, there he is. 181, he bought it about 15 years ago. They drove it for about five years and then the clutch went out. Uh, in the meanwhile, they'd put all new brakes in it, uh, straight pipe, single exhaust, and they parked it. So I asked him, I said, wow, what's going on? They called it Frankie, I call it Rex. So what's going on with Frankie? And they said, ah, oh, the clutch is shot, mice got into it. I'll sell it to you for 500 bucks, but if you ever get rid of it, you got to sell it back to us. And I said, oh, perfect, absolutely. So I can't get rid of this one because I got to sell it back to him. But this thing, I put a mild cammed 350. It needed a clutch. So it's like, well, and then the, the 283 was worn out, big clunky four speed. So I had a 350 that I got from a buddy who LS swapped something. It had a cam in it. We resealed it all. And then I had an NV3500 out of a 93 S10 behind a 4.3 didn't come with a T5, I was surprised. Had the NV3500. You could buy like the entire hydraulic clutch assembly from pedal down to the uh, slave for like something silly on Rock Auto, like 30 or 50 bucks. So I put that on there, converted to a hydraulic clutch. So it's got a five speed with overdrive. I cut the five speed handle off, I put the old four speed shifter. And this thing absolutely rips, it gets it. It's got a factory posi in it. It's got factory 16 inch wheels, which is pretty rare for a half ton, six lug, 16 inch wheels. It's got my favorite 88 to 94 seat in it. You see that in a lot of the stuff in this fleet. Uh, it's got a lot of local history and this thing is just a beater, but I would jump in this thing. It's got good exhaust, it's got good brakes. I put new tires on it two years ago and uh, this thing will hit the key go fuel gauge works temp gauge works we put a new aluminum radiator in it here a while back but yeah this thing it's just a total crap box of a pickup the dog legs are gone the door's been wrapped around the floors have been patched the seats just crappy enough um like i said there's that four speed shift handle speedo doesn't work because that's an electronic output this pickup really doesn't need anything but it also needs absolutely everything at the same time like i said you could drive this thing anywhere and it freaking between that engine and that five speed it freaking moves bed floor is probably what it needs actually of all things i could screw some plywood to it but nah all wrecks yeah so i guess we can't get rid of that one unless somebody offered me thirty-five thousand dollars, and then i'd split it with my buddies and there we go but this thing works great for 
hauling leads, hauling parts. If I got to go somewhere and pick something up and just drive that back and just leave this there, it can sit outside. Ain't a big deal. It's a good, good rig. I remember detailing this engine, like when I put it all together, spent so much time doing it. And uh, yeah, now it's complete hot garbage. It's got the factory uh, steel upper radiator hose. We put this aluminum radiator in, in a video. I painted up the manifolds, they got all dirty. Uh, put these aftermarket valve covers on it and intake. Edelbrock carb. Yeah, this thing is, it's good, but you just can't keep paint on an engine. You can't keep them detailed. Good freaking pickup. Rex. This one can sit outside, so yeah, it's handy to have around the yard. This one, somebody needs to own. One of my buddies called me on, I went and picked it up on New Year's Day, so it must have been on New Year's Eve. He called me and says, hey, I got this. I think it's an 88. I think it's the same year as the blue one that we got rid of. He said, you want another one of those TBI 700R4 Suburbans? I was like, not really. So he gave me a price, which was pretty reasonable because he was LS swapping his 57 Chevy this summer. And he wanted some money to do that. So I said, all right, I'll come get it. It's pretty dry. Um, you can see somebody painted the hood, somebody scuffed the sides. It's got 15 by seven torque thrust all the way around, which I like, but they use the same size tire all the way around. So like it needs some big and littles or it needs some eights in the back. So I'm thinking I should buy four eights and steal like two eights, put on the back of this and take the two sevens off of this. and put 15 by sevens and eights on, you know, something like the Bluezer. I don't know. Or somebody else should just buy it. But yeah, it's a 350 TBI. Somebody was whipping donuts and put a giant rock through the windshield. So it needs a windshield real bad, like real, real, real bad. Starts right up. It's got kind of loud, like three inch exhaust on it. It's got a uh, hand cooked tires that got like no miles on them. American racing, nice 15 by seven torque thrust d's they took out the uh vinyl bench seat and put these buckets in which is fine but they didn't finish the job they did the dash even it's got tilt it's got cruise it's got ac i don't know if any of the above works needs a headliner like they all do but yeah i would probably just find the right seat or find an entire suburban to change it over or just enjoy it as is so i got parts of a second row and third row i got a lot of the gray seats but i don't think i got the factory front seat but yeah it's uh super dry i think it came out of texas he said rust back there like every square buddy has it's got barn doors it's got a receiver hitch uh, paints baked off the roof i don't know anything about this thing i literally loaded it up hauled it home yeah there's no rust on this side this thing's good actually but i like these tbis and i like overdrives yeah uh, i was just gonna lower this thing make a video like we did on that blue one and uh try to flip it but i don't have time there's a couple of hooey's in the doors this thing's not that great so price and availability on this thing somebody should come get it before i fall in love with it but yeah good rig so that's kind of the lineup up front here. That's what I spent the entire day yesterday doing was rounding all this stuff up and getting it here. And I had a little bit of help, but not really. I did most of it myself. So I got a bunch of cars. Late models are all sitting at my uh, Sergio. So this is the King. I found this thing on Facebook Marketplace. It's a 1968 Dodge D100. It's got a slant six and a four speed slant six, best six cylinder out here. Uh, what is these uh 225 it will smoke that 223 ford and that uh 235 chevrolet just absolutely annihilate them i wish this thing had a five speed overdrive or a four speed overdrive or any type of overdrive because it goes good sits too high needs to be lower being a straight axle there's not a good way to do it same deal with this thing the front end's all wore out it's uh it's pretty coupled together it's got rust in a lot of spots it's got a decal so we can't get rid of it and i'm into it too cheap but uh yeah i got this thing it was like saddle brown spray paint so we uh yeah just like this desert tan whatever we used some goo gone uh graffiti remover got all that stripped off down to this petty blue my favorite 88 to 94 chevy seat in it the floors are freaking smoked uh, i think we've blown up two slant sixes both because of my 
fault. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's freaking that's aluminum somebody put in there. This thing is just absolute hot garbage, but it you could jump in it and go anywhere you want. It drives really good and it's super good on fuel. Best economy, best power six cylinder of anything that I got. <clears throat> but we can't sell it because it's on a decal unless somebody wants to give us $35,000. That's that's my number today, $35,000 on a lot of stuff. It's rusty, but it's petty blue, it's a short bed. Picked it up reasonable, yeah. I need to drive it more often. I've probably put a tank of gas to that one this year though, at least. All right, next on the list is this 56 Chevy two-door post. We started putting floors in it. We did uh, some wheels and tires on it. It's got a 235 with a six cylinder. It runs okay-ish, doesn't run great. I'm not a big 56 guy. I'm not a big Tri-5 guy. If I'm gonna do a Tri-5, it's gonna be a 55 two-door post. Uh, this car, it's not great, but it's a two-door and it's a 56. Uh, if you wanna own this thing, you can. I started putting floors in it. I think I have carpet for it. I think I have a window. I don't know what I have for it. Just pretend it, it is like you see it and it is in, the, in this video. Go check that out. I got a couple of bumpers for it, I guess. Um, it's rusty down there. You can see this stuff in the video. Uh, I kind of fall in love with this car some days and the next day I'm like, meh. If I'm gonna keep it, it's gonna get like a V8 and I don't know, either a four speed or something. I'm done with the 235 six cylinders. They're good engines, I like them, but they're just not long road trip. They're not much fun to drive down the road. Something a little peppier. Hey, it's the poop guy. That's a real poopy job he's got, huh, Duff? You'd probably love that job, playing with poop all day. But anyway, we'll put a price and availability uh, down below on this car because I just can't get excited to finish putting floors in it because I hate doing floors. And like I started doing them so nice, so I can't like hack them now. The, the 61 bubble top I got for nothing came out of some trees. It's a bubble top. I'm never going to find another car. It's really not that bad of a car. I'm still into it super cheap. We swapped the uh, 283 Power Glide out of another 61 or 2. I think it was a 62 four door. It runs, drives, uh, steers. It does not stop. But that's kind of where we're at. Like, I need to either convert it to disc brakes or take all the 63 drum parts and put on this car and then rebuild the steering and lower it and then put glass in it. We put the back window in it. It should probably have floors. I do have a decent bench seat, but this one's not for sale. Yeah, $35,000 if you want this, this bubble top. 35 grand, you can own it. They're just such cool cars. And I found so many pieces for it. It's getting so close. It's like, it's, it's not gonna be a nice car. It'll never be a nice car so long as I own it anyway, but like, it'll be a bubble top. We'll get it there. Maybe we can get all, slick down there in uh, Tecumseh, Oklahoma to straighten out this quarter panel for us. Other than that, it's it's not that good, but it's not that bad. And it's a Bel Air instead of an Impala, so it's a pretty rare car, actually. And we got late models. We got the 81 Tow Pig. We got the 05 59 Cummins, the 06 59 Cummins. We picked up this uh, six liter service truck that works pretty good, the Expeditions in another location. And the Merc is going to the same gentleman who bought the 63 Impala Super Sport. So thank you to that guy. Uh, parts pick up with a six liter and a plow. We're gonna take the plow off of this and we're gonna put on the uh, front of that service truck. We've already stole a bunch of parts off that for LS swaps and pretty much took the entire interior out of that and put in that pickup. So shout out to the uh, subscriber who told us about that thing. So this is the 66 we call it. It's a 66 four wheel drive, three quarter ton, uh, 327 with a four barrel auto block and intake, four speed, 88 to 94 seat. Cause that's what we do around here. Runs, drives, stops, steers. This thing, it's a uh, local. It's been in Sargent County its whole life. Uh, one of my uncles actually owned it at one time. Uh, the guy who sold it to me is a class or a classmate went to school with me. He said 500 bucks, but you got to sell it back to me if you ever want to sell it. So I can't sell it because it's too handy to have around the yard. Like we throw a conduit in the back, another random scrap iron, and we go pick up tree branches with it. But this thing is just a terrible car to drive, pick up, whatever. It, these old four wheel drives, four wheel drives in general kind of suck. That 71 Fords, was that the only four wheel drive up there other than the Bronco? But 
the four wheel drives just don't drive that great. This thing drives horrendously. It's like 55 tops, straight pipes. It's loud. It's rough riding. It rattles. It's it's cool because it's like rare, but every panel is wasted. Like this pickup needs absolutely everything. And for some reason, it's it overheats with a brand new aluminum radiator. So I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that there was raccoons crapping down the heads. So we need to figure out what we're gonna do with this pickup. Really, I, I think we just need to just jump in it and drive it once in a while. And to be honest, that's that's like the thing that we need to do with all of them. And any old car that you have is just get in it, drive it, check the fluids, check the tires, throw a battery in it, license and insurance, and just go, just enjoy it. Worst thing you can do is sit. Here's another one that just kind of sits. I, if we put a bunch of time into it, I don't know why. The Snooch Rocket, I think this thing would be determined. It was like a like a 68 Ford Galaxy or something like that. Good running 283, uh, good shifting automatic. It's got a nine inch with a, some crazy gears that we put in it. Disc, is it disc brakes? Oh yeah, disc brakes. We didn't go through all that stuff, but they work. I think on this thing is I got that 53 Ford pickup, F100, we did a video on it. We couldn't get the six cylinder running. I think all this stuff would be good to drop in that, or at least the motor and transmission, and then throw the nine inch on the shelf and just scrap the rest, because this thing is just, it's not feasible. What do you do with it? You drive it in parades. We don't have dunes around here to like take it to. It, somebody's just gonna get hurt or get in trouble. We don't need either of that, so. Old Snoochie's gonna probably just be like dirt rentals and, and be a donor so that we can put something else on the road, you know, sacrifice it. But yeah. It's 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 ready to go. Like throw the battery in it. I think we'll light right off. Oh my gosh, since we're over here we might as well look at the old big block OG ramp truck. So this is a 72 GMC with a 454 turbo 400. It's got good tires, brakes. This thing is is pretty much ready to go. We gotta work some kinks out. This was my uncle's, so it's got sentimental value. Can't get rid of it. So yeah, there it is. But that thing would uh, run and drive, no doubt. Somebody in Texas paid for this thing or Louisiana or somewhere and they keep paying storage and they just need to come get it. This car is kind of spoken for, but we kind of want to steal some parts off it. So yeah, this thing is available. We have a title for this thing. It's got a 6.2 diesel in it. We haven't messed with it at all. I went and got it because it was cheap on Marketplace or I thought it was cheap. I paid the same for this as I paid for Bernie. So yeah, you tell me which one's the better deal. Nice part about this one, other than it's a Chevy, just kidding, Ford guys, is it's four wheel drive. Bernie's obviously a two wheel drive. So this thing would probably get all around a little bit better. It doesn't have near as nice a record, near as nice a body. It's a diesel, yada, yada. I don't even know if it's a four speed or an automatic. It is a four speed. If you want to own this thing, price and availability in the description below. Did a video on that thing. Uh, that needs to get sold it's a 54 ford cab over we just bobbed a frame and put on the back just to make it roll around y block won't run uh 51 ford f4 price and availability on this thing this thing runs and drives it's got a pretty good running flathead in it but can't get rid of it same deal with this thing it's this thing's just hot garbage but it's got a 351 windsor so it's got a good core to build this thing runs and drives really good uh I don't want to keep the 300 but i really don't need it so this would be a really good car it's got a title stop steer has got brakes drives pretty good i think there's some rust in the frame that somebody's got to fix i can't remember everything on all these cars but these three and that uh wrecker all need to go and so does that one uh the rivs coming up in a video 55 is coming up in a video, 59 Pontiac's coming up in a video, 63 Pontiac's coming in a video, 71 Nova, all that stuff. Those aren't runners yet. So we're just down to the two that are in the garage. I do have two more cars that uh, I had one of them running yesterday. I got a 39 Ford two-door sedan. It's all original. Oh, I got a 35 Ford pickup or 36 Ford pickup that's at Chevaholics. He's uh, working on the brakes and the steering and all that stuff, getting it ready to go. Cause like I said, I get so close and then I get burned out. And so he's uh, wrapping that up for us. So, and then I got that Model A two-door sedan. It's a 29 that's in uh, original paint that uh, would probably run if we threw a battery in it. 
but I ran out of help. And I don't have a good six volt battery. So we boosted the 39 to get it running. All right, here's where the cream of the crop is. I had a 2014 Jeep that I put like 3,000 miles in two years. So I got rid of that because it was just collecting dust in here. Um, I don't drive my late models enough. If anything, I drive that Expedition or one of the tow pigs everywhere. This is Reggie, uh, 47 Chevrolet pickup, short box. It's got a Camaro subframe, turbo 350, uh, 350 AC. Drives great. Uh, I'd like to put aluminum radiator. It pushes a little bit of heat when you got the AC going, going down the road. I just took this thing on a 900 mile road trip to Nebraska and back for my college roommates. Wedding worked pretty good other than the exhaust fell off. Uh, I did film some of that, so we'll have to make that into a video, but this thing just kind of needs everything. It runs and drives and it works, but uh, it's gutless with that two barrel and the 350. Uh, I'd like overdrive, I'd like posi, I'd like a little bit wider rear end. So I think what this is gonna get at some point, I don't know if it's gonna happen this winter, it needs uh, gauges, cause it's got these terrible old Dakota Digitals. I'd like to get some updated instruments. I'd like to put a bigger fuel tank in. This thing's like a 10 or 12 gallon fuel tank. So you're constantly putting fuel in. And put a posi in the back and do like a 5.3 and a 4L60E just to get a little bit more power, a little bit more economy. Uh, get cruise control because it's kind of tight in the cab. But this is a great driving pickup. I enjoy it. Like I said, I probably put 2,500, maybe 3,000 miles on this thing. We took it down to the Lone Star Roundup. It's just a really great little pickup. I'm so glad I bought a done pickup. Yeah, we had to put a bunch of work into it, but it's a good pickup. Uh, again, my uncle built this uh, for a customer years and years and years ago, so it's got sentimental value. It's on a sticker. We can't get rid of it. But yeah, this pickup's good. You can see by all the bugs on it that we uh, we drive it. We actually wash it once in a while too, unfortunately. Getting sick of doing that, but she is a good little rig. Just needs a few updates. Or just freaking drive it as is and enjoy it. Because if we take it all apart, it'll probably never go back together, right Duff? And here is my other pride and joy that I didn't even have out last year. And it's Labor Day weekend before I got it out this year. This is a 1963 and a half half year galaxy uh, was when they put the uh, fastback roof and this is another reason i don't really care for the 63 uh, impala i got because i got a 63 galaxy and these are way sexier cars in my opinion uh, i put disc brakes on this car it's got a 289 with a cruise um nine inch all that stuff uh, i need sway bars i got them sitting there to uh firm it up this car was painted probably 25 years ago now uh my uncle actually kind of jockeyed this car. He bought it. It was a one owner car. I think it's got like 60 some thousand miles on it. He bought it, uh, sold it. The guy who bought it had the engine all rebuilt. That engine probably doesn't have 2000 miles on it. And then that guy passed away. His kid had it all repainted. It got put in a barn and was waiting for interior. 20 years later, they never did anything with it. I got a hold of it. So I got it out. This is a barn find. Almost all of these cars were not running and driving when I got them. So this Reggie was running and driving. Uh, White Lightning was running and driving. Bernie kind of ran and drove. That uh, Suburban ran and drove. Dirt Reynolds drove onto the trailer. That white short box almost would drive on the trailer on its own. I think it did, but it was it barely limped on. But yeah, most of this stuff was not running and driving. So if anybody says that I don't finish a project, like your definition of finish and mine are two different things. When this thing's running and driving and I can enjoy it, that's finished. I mean, a project is never finished. Like I said, this car is all done. I got the interior all redone. Part that I hate about this car is it's black. So you're always constantly cleaning it. You're worried about people rubbing up against it. You're worried about dogs jumping on it because my dog is a complete dirt ball. I can't take him in this car because I have $5,000 into these two seats alone. Plus carpet, plus paint, plus sill plates. I mean, I have a ton of money in interior in that car. Don't even look at it, Duff. Just kidding. Um, but yeah, this is a really, really, really nice car. And I just, I don't remember driving because it's, it's too nice and I can't take my dog with me and I hate leaving him behind. And he hates staying behind, but this car is not for sale. Even the $35,000 wouldn't take it. Cause like I said, my uncle owned it. I remember it as a kid, him having it. 
and I'm never gonna have anything this nice ever again. So this is my one nice car. 63 and a half galaxies are just absolutely gorgeous. Not a huge fan of the red interior. Uh, I like their XL interior, but I don't fit in XL cars. I wish it was a 394 speed car, yada, 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 but it is what it is. Super good car. We should just make a decal out of it so we can absolutely never sell it. I need to wash this car. I need to get out. I need to drive it. The uh, window regulator or the handle or something stripped out and the window dropped down, so I need to take the door apart. Uh, it needs a rear view mirror. I can't not find the right mirror for this thing. I don't think this is the factory mirror. I wish they would have just never put it back on the car, but it's busted and I can't find the right mirror. I've ordered reproductions. They're not the right ones. It's got dual exhaust. Uh, I should probably put a radio in it. The seat squeaks every time you hit a bump. It's like ear, ear, ear. So I need to fix that seat because it annoys me. Uh, the gas pedal is like has the craziest amount of geometry and springs and linkages and levers and everything. And I hate the way the gas pedal feels. You have to like push, 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 and then you like over centers. And so I need to figure out something there. I'm sure there's an adjustment or some way we can short something. But yeah galaxy good car if only we had somebody to like wash it and maintain it and store it for us i do have a nice fitted cover for it that needs to go on it so that's why i sold my jeep so that i have room to keep these two inside because like i said this car was inside another location and i just would never make time to go get it oh it needs a rear bumper this bumper needs to either be re-chromed or find it a different one they don't reproduce them you can't get a lot of parts for these cars like you can for a chevrolet Chevy guys are way lucky than us Ford guys. Cause you know, I'm a diehard Ford guy. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's the tour of the fleet. So if you saw something on here that's for sale that you can't live without, hit us up, mortskipairgmail.com. Uh, go check out the merch, mortski.com. Uh, buy yourself some merch so that I can afford to take my dog to the groomers. Cause apparently you are the dirtiest, nastiest, stinkiest dog knowing the man aren't you well yeah let us know what you think we should do i mean what should we do with the uh drive chain on a dirt reynolds should we put it in uh white light in my 62 chevy pickup should we put it in uh casper that little white chevy pickup should we take everything and put it in that unibody i don't know let me know what you think we need to do with all this stuff because uh i got a problem that's the first step is admitting you got a problem right duff the first step yeah oh my gosh you are such a dirt ball you're definitely not riding in the galaxy today all right so uh thank you very much for watching uh my tour i don't mean to brag i am super thankful for everything that i have i've in my opinion i've worked very hard to get to this point in my life where i can have all this stuff and i'm very appreciative to every one of you folks who watches my videos i probably had a third of these before YouTube started and I probably would have got another, you know, handful of them if, if there was no YouTube, but um, half of these cars, these run and driving cars, I would not have if it weren't for YouTube and the revenue that it creates and the possibilities that it creates, you know, from networking, um, like that pickup back there that uh, 99 to 06, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have got that if it wasn't for YouTube because of uh subscribers telling us about that stuff same deal with that uh that tow truck that was a buddy who knows i do youtube videos uh, i wouldn't have went down to puddins and uh, met him and hung out with him if it wasn't for youtube and bought that uh, 92 chevy dirt rentals i definitely wouldn't have bought I, the only reason i bought that car is for the videos and the videos did great and i do absolutely love that car but it is horrendous um yeah ramp truck a buddy of mine that I kind of met. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't have bought that except for YouTube. That video didn't do that great, but that thing's cool. Somebody needs to own that. So I guess what I'm getting at is uh, I'm I'm humble. I'm super appreciative to all you. I'm super appreciative where I'm at. And I know I wouldn't have been able to been to get where I'm at without the hard work that I have put forth, uh, the hard work that Duff puts in, that Mojo puts in. Uh, the young men that uh, helped me out this summer, a couple of college or high school kids came out and, and have, have helped. Don't worry, everybody gets paid. 
and uh and chin we can't forget about chin chin is the man he's the man behind the scenes editing this stuff his wife and daughter for putting up with all the late hours and the shenanigans that we get to do around here but yeah i just wanted to do a video i for myself i wanted to get all this stuff out and get it running once this year and i thought you know if i get it all out i'd like to line it all up like my matchbox cars and uh have some fun with them and then it's like well now's the time to do a video so here we are this is the video so thank you very much for watching check out our merch mortski.com go check out chris craft he's a good dude as well uh, hopefully we'll see him at the car show next weekend in watertown south dakota one of the very few car shows that we go to other than a couple of small little ones but remember it doesn't matter how you get it done so long as you're having fun duff are you having fun any day you get to roll in dirt is fun all right on to the next one only had two people randomly show up yesterday like and pull in the yard and just walk through all my cars because they thought it was a car show that's when you know you got too many cars